you know, and that's the biggest biggest mistake that people can do is underestimate this guy. And I also have a question is... Well, hold I agree with you, by the way. I, I said that earlier. I said don't underestimate him. That's why the show is devoted to that subject. He's extremely smart. He is a street fighter, and he's very motivated. And he also is a Pied Piper uh, because most of the American people are uneducated with regard to what he's actually selling. Yeah, and, and my, also, my, my other concern is, you know, people... You know, he's constantly throwing out that everything is free, everything is free, everything is free, and that Wall Street is going to pay for it. So when Wall Street tanks, who's going to pay for it? If I don't, know. I, don't, Street, I, don't I don't have an answer to that. They want the banks to collapse, and then what will happen? Who's going to bail them out? The government? Where will the money come from? And where's our retirement? They don't, you don't understand something, Danny. They don't care. It's winning is all. That's all that matters is absolute power, Danny. It doesn't matter who pays for anything. It's absolute power that matters to a politician. That's all that matters. Danny, thanks for calling the Savage Nation. I don't know. I think I want to talk about something else. I'm not sure I want to go on with this anymore. I'm bored of it. But here's a little article related to it that I should read to you because it's related. I saw it this morning on the Jerusalem Post. Israeli politicians feel kinship with Democratic insurgent Sanders. The elderly Jewish man became the darling of young first-time voters by displaying the energy of a 20-year-old, even though he was well past retirement age. The above sentence applies to New Hampshire Democratic primary victor Bernie Sanders. But it also fits an Israeli politician named Rafi Itan, who led the Pensioners Party to a surprising seven seats in the 06 election. A ton like Sanders galvanized young voters, winning much of his party's support in Tel Aviv. Now, what you have to understand is Eitan is a socialist. Joint list M.K. Dov Kanin in Israel, who, like Sanders, is a socialist and also galvanized young voters when he ran for Tel Aviv mayor, said he also feels close to him. He said he was not surprised to see young people get frustrated with what he called a corrupt capitalist establishment and prefer socialist values. And he quotes this. He says, Bernie Sanders tells Americans that the greatest danger to America is the inequality that disintegrates American society from within and creates hatred, tension, and racism. We see a generation of young people in Israel who are thirsty for a different kind of politics. They're a generation that feels cheated because they were told that if they study and be good, they will have jobs and wages, and they grew up and saw those promises were empty. Now, remember, these are all hard-left socialists in Israel. Well, my friends, they're lying to you. You see, I was cheated because I was told that if I studied, and if I was good, I would have jobs and wages when I grew up. But my uh, future was put on hold by the left, not by the right. My future was put on hold not by the capitalists, but by the socialists in the ACLU and the universities. See, that's the paradox that the young don't understand. They're being promised a bill of goods that can never be delivered. I'll be back in a minute. I am going to be the greatest jobs president that God ever created. Remember that. Don't believe those phony numbers when you hear 4.9 and 5% unemployment. The number's probably 28, 29, as high as 35. In fact, I even heard recently 42%. Do you think we'd have gatherings like this if we, were, we had 5% if we had Unemployment. Do you really think we'd have these gatherings? Forgetting about security, forgetting about ISIS, which, by the way, we're going to knock the hell out of ISIS. We're going to knock the hell out of them. And it's going to be done the right way. He's the only one saying it. I mean, is it any wonder he's popular? Are all of the hand ringers with the pink underwear in New York are screaming, oh, I can't wait till he implodes. They said that about me, by the way, 21 years ago. Everyone predicted I would implode on the radio. I've heard this all before. Oh, that's savage. He won't last in radio. Oh, he's going to self-destruct on the radio. Oh, he's going to self-destruct. Same thing with uh, Trump. Anyone who stands up to the man is going to self-destruct. Well, let me tell you something. He's not going to self-destruct. And I'll tell you something else. When he becomes president, he's going to really remember those who supported him, and he's going to never forget those who stabbed him in the back. And that's why they're running scared. Now, I want to go to the list of investors in the Bernie L. Madoff Investment Securities just for a minute. Because many of you have to understand that people like to hear the other man's misery. You probably didn't invest, so you didn't lose anything. So what you want to hear is about those who did, so you feel better. 
Now, some of these are big companies and big hedge funds. The Fairfield Century, a U.S. investment firm, lost $7.5 billion. Grupo Santander, a Spanish bank, was taken down for $3.5 billion. Kingate Management, Bermuda Hedge Fund, lost $3.5 billion. I'm going to go down now and get to names in a minute because the hedge funds you never heard about. HSB, British Bank, the crook stole a billion dollars made off. Now let's go down to some names, uh, to names you may recognize here. Ira Rennert, U.S. individual, lost $200 million to Bernie Sanders. Carl Shapiro, Carl Ruth Shapiro Family Foundation, a charity, lost $145 million. Now, what I'm trying to tell you is that he didn't discriminate. People say, well, he was an evil man and he did this and he did that, but he was not discriminating. He didn't just pick on uh, non-Jewish groups. Yeshiva University, a U.S. Jewish university endowment, he stole $140 million. I'm showing you he was a very, very fair crook. Hadassah, Jewish charity, stole $90 million from them. Korea Life Insurance Company stole $50 million from them. Wollasoff Foundation, $38 million. Family of Sarah Chu. Sarah Chu? Sarah Chu. Los Angeles Jewish Community Foundation, Jewish charity. He stole $18 million from them. Alicia Koplowitz, he took $13.7 million from her. The Lautenberg Family Foundation, $12.8 million. Now, this is really unbelievable to me. Marion and Eli Wiesel, he took $12 million from Eli Wiesel. Eli Wiesel, as you understand, is the, the face of the Holocaust. Uh, don't get me started on him because I'm not a fan of his, by the way. I think he uses that tragedy as a, a little too personally to get ahead, and I don't like that. But nevertheless, he's an icon of the Jewish liberal. He stole $12 million from him. What am I trying to say by this? I don't know. You figure it out. Richard Roth, $10 million, nothing, chicken feed. Erwin Kellner, whoever he is. Julian Levitt, $6 million. North Shore Long Island Jewish Health System, the U.S. pension fund from this hospital, he took $5.7 million. Stony Brook University, $5.4 million. David Berger, an individual, $5 million. You know what that was for him? Like lunch money. Berger must have come to him with the money and said, can I get in your fund? And he would have said, $5 million to me? I spend more than that for a bar mitzvah. I don't need your money. Remember the guy I called last week and said he, he told me he wanted to put in $18 million and what, what Bernie said to him? I don't mean Bernie Sanders. I mean Bernie Madoff, who to me is one and the same. By the way, that's why I'm doing this. You may not understand it. Bernie Sanders is Bernie Madoff of politics. And that's something that you have to understand. Instead of stealing individuals' money through bad investments, through a, through a Ponzi scheme, as Bernie Madoff did, Bernie Sanders wants to steal the whole nation through communism. Congregation Kehilath, a synagogue, three and a half million took out of them. New York Law School, oh, they got what they deserved, three million. <laughs> Sorry, I have no sympathy. Let's see, American Friends of Yad Sarah, Jewish charity, one and a half mil, chicken feed, lunch money. Harold Reutenberg, a million dollars, not even lunch money. Stephen Abbott, individual, less than a million dollars, less than lunch money. And so I'm just saying, don't, whatever you do about Bernie Madoff, don't say he's a racist. He stole from pe people of his own ethnic group quite willingly. So don't call him a racist, please. I'll be here for another hour. Be here. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation. Talk radio for the thinking person, home of borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. I want it for you. You'll never All know. Right, we're shifting gears in hour number three. We're going to some something else. I want to go somewhere else. I'm tired of politics. I hear some, so many people cheering. Thank God! And we're going to talk about Hillary Clinton for one minute, just for fun. I'm going back to 2006 with my book, uh, 
what was it called, the political zoo? Because I'm not selling it to you since it's out of print and it's worth a fortune. I'm doing it just for the fun of it. Because some of the existing candidates were uh, satirized. Is that the right your word to use? Yeah, it's satirized. The true end of satire is the amendment of vice by correction. And he who writes honestly is no more an enemy to the offender than the physician to the patient when he prescribes harsh remedies to an inveterate disease. John Dryden, 1681. So, yes, yeah, satire. You satire to write about various candidates. And at the time, Hillary Clinton was also already a well-known personality. And in this book, The Political Zoo, I was the zookeeper. And I gave each of the individuals that I wrote a little satire about a, a cartoon and a name, an animal name, a, a Latin, Latin binomial. And I called her the Limber Leopard, Peronista Manipulatus, <laughs> which I think is still funny, by the way. But you have to know a little bit of the Latin to get the joke. And I wrote this, Hillary Clinton is the limber leopard, an agile and extremely dangerous member of the cat family, is native to the Great Lakes, but adapted surprisingly well to the remote areas along our Kansas's Whitewater River. As the queen of her species, this thick-legged predator is known for her domination of the pack, and her one advantage is being able to change her spots at will. This sturdy animal is also known for the unusual processes she uses for selecting a breeding partner. Although she may appear asexual, this predatory beast has a keen eye for the alpha male of her species, or at least one that she could hector into seeming like an alpha male. Although, <laughs> although the limber leopard tolerates the alpha's sexual waywardness, she can become entirely vicious towards any female of the species that threatens the alpha status of her mate. That's all. That was in 2006. It's only gotten worse. So let's see who still is in politics, who I wrote about a lot of them are God. Here's Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Here's Diane Feinstein. She's laying low, by the way. There's only one reason for that. The only reason Feinstein's laying low is that the contracts must be uh, flying high. That's all. Just a guess. I'm being sarcastic. You know she's as honest as the snow is, is, is driven. Diane Feinstein, Mao Zedungus. The Frisco Red Heron is a standout bird known for its heroic migration. The famed long flight from the Bay Area to the Chinese homeland during the annual August congressional recess to meet up with its mate. In China, it is known as the hidden dragon heron and is kept as a pet by many higher-up Chinese Communist Party officials. The red heron is particularly possessive about its privacy and property and uh, can regularly be spotted clucking for its collective carcasses, though it readily invades all other birds' habitats as it feels necessity warrants. And I called her a Gulfstream liberal before anyone else did, which is funny. Rudy Giuliani, New Yorker, a pseudo conservatist. <laughs> oh, God, no wonder he won't come on the show. Rudy Giuliani, New Yorker, pseudo conservatist, the Gotham Gazelle. Strike him from the list. I won't be eating in the restaurant with him. Kim Jong il, he's already uh, across the river sticks. John Kerry, we gave a name to. Flipper Floppus. The flipper fl family of toothless dolphins luxuriate in the protected coves of Cape Cod, Martha's Vineyard, and the South. Very funny. You're not interested. I think, I think satire is dead. The American mind can't even handle it. I'll give you one more. Here's one you may know. Harry Reid. There's a picture of him as an upright mouse with little tiny fe uh, feet in the front. Mousei pugilisticus. Harry Reid, Mousei pugilisticus, the Nevada desert kangaroo rat, earned its name from its repeated jumping from position to position and its rodent-like zeal for subversion and destruction. The kangaroo rat is one of the most lethal animals in the political zoo, not for anything it actually does, but for the progressive plague it spreads that is known to paralyze and destroy the body politic. Scientists haven't yet con confirmed if the disease is caused by the special interest fleas carried by the rat or if it's found in the odorous... the odorous... What? Oh, the odorous policy droppings that it leaves behind. It's all so good. No wonder it wasn't a big bestseller. It was too far ahead of its time. Chuck Schumer, Gotham Pushes, the Brooklyn Jackass. <laughs> not, not bad. Arnold Schwarzenegger, Terminator Strudelhead. <laughs> no wonder Arnie doesn't call anymore. <laughs> no wonder Arnie wouldn't come on my radio show when I was local. Arnold Schwarzenegger, Terminator Strudelhead. The Terminator Rhino or Rhino Republican <laughs> name only. Not bad. That was funny. They had a 1995. Very funny. More. Cindy Shahan. She's already gone with the win, though. Howard Stern. Schlocko Jocko. 
This colorful, gangly creature is a mutant strain of the Long 